Hello everyone. My name is uh, Mark Hadfield. I'm a consultant working with Franz and I'm here to present the integration of a Liger graph with Spark uh, for a machine learning task. Spark is a data analysis platform running within the Hadoop environment. We're using a Liger graph, the triple store, and we'll be using the MLlib machine learning library, which is part of the Spark project. First, let me show you the architecture of the system that we'll be using today. We have our Spark cluster, which in uh, this example is a single server, um, although it's of course can scale up to any number of servers. We have a Lego graph in our cluster environment, and we have the Spark job server, which is a open source uh, REST front end, which allows interacting with a Spark cluster. We'll be using a set of scripts to run jobs within this cluster, and we'll be using the uh, Allegograph WebView UI to look at the data on the Allegograph side. We'll be running a machine learning task to take a Reuters uh, 20 news related uh, document set. This consists of 20,000 documents broken into 20 different categories. Each category has around 1,000 documents in it. And these documents are across different categories like politics, sports, um, and um, uh, baseball, basketball, and so forth. We'll be building a categorization model using uh, the Naive Bayes uh, algorithm. Spark and MLlib come with a number of machine learning algorithms, uh, so we're using this as an example. Uh, but many other options are available. The data within Spark is resident in HDFS, the underlying Hadoop file system, uh, as well as individually within the Spark workers. So where Spark has an advantage is it can pull data in and out of uh, disk and into memory uh, for very fast processing. So we can process a very large data set with Spark and interact with a Lego graph to pull in data as needed uh, for training our model and ultimately classifying our documents. We'll be doing our training uh, broken into these three uh, tasks. The first is to do a query against a Lego graph to pull data into an RDD, which is the Spark data structure for storing data. We'll then be processing that RDD and doing queries against the Lego graph to pull in the individual features that we need uh, for training our model and putting the results of that into an RDD. And then we'll be training a new model uh, based on that RDD and then writing that model out to uh, disk. In a classification task, we want to run our documents through our model in order to classify them into our, do, uh, into our categories, uh, and then we want to write that back into our database. Uh, so the first step here is to identify our uh, set of documents to classify. So that's a Sparkle query against the Lego graph, and the results go into an RDD. Then we select our features for our classification set. So that's a set of uh, Sparkle queries against the Lego graph, uh, the results of which go into an RDD. The great thing about these, these Spark workers is that they run in parallel and can fire parallel uh, Sparkle queries against the Lego graph uh, to pull in the data uh, that they need in parallel. So we can parallelize uh, this process. We then uh, take our features and our documents in our RDD uh, and we classify them with our model to create our uh, classifications uh, for them. Then we run those uh, categories through uh, inference rules. And these inference rules are part of, uh, make use of the semantic web standards for using inference and allow us to infer uh, new information based upon uh, the categories. In this example, we take categories like baseball and football and so forth, and we use inferencing uh, to conclude that they are part of a broader sports category. Uh, and then we write that information into uh, RDD. Then we write the, that RDD back into a Lego graph. Uh, so we take the results of our classification uh, and the results of inferencing, and then we write that back into a Lego graph. So we could use this type of uh, processing in many different use cases. 
One example is in the uh, medical domain, where we can take patient records, uh, take a look at their uh, information, such as uh, test results and so forth, use uh, various types of machine learning algorithms, such as Naive, Naive Bayes, uh, and from that conclude new information. We could also use this within the financial services domain uh, for things like fraud detection and compliance, where we take uh, source data, such as transactional data, train that to detect patterns that we're interested in, uh, build a model around that, and then use that to classify new transactions as uh, being conformant with our compliance rules uh, or being potentially fraudulent transactions, uh, and so on. So next I'm going to show you the user interfaces uh, that we have uh, for these various components. First of which, this is, uh, these servers are running within the Amazon environment. Uh, so here is our standard Amazon interface to uh, EC2, and we see two active servers. Uh, these are the two servers that we'll be using uh, in, this, um, in this exercise. Next screen is our Hadoop cluster interface. So we're using the uh, Ambari interface here, uh, and we can see a dashboard of what's going on in our cluster. So we can see our HDFS disk usage, we can see our CPU usage, uh, memory usage, uh, and so forth through an interface such as this. Next is the user interface to Spark. So here we see that we're running uh, one worker because uh, we have one server. Um, it's using uh, eight cores available. Uh, we have one task that's running right now. This is a open task uh, that's waiting for for new tasks to be submitted to it to run. So this is part of what uh, the job server um, component provides. It keeps a task open uh, and can send new tasks to it uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, and this allows new tasks to start very quickly without the overhead of starting a, a brand new process. Next we have uh, our Lycograph uh, screen here. So we see that in our repository of our 20 news data, we have uh, 75,384 statements. These are the uh, triples related to our, our uh, documents, that 20,000 document set. I can drill into an individual document here, and we can see that uh, we have uh, a number of properties that we, uh, that we have. We have a body property, and this is the text of this particular document. Uh, we see that it has a uh, subject. Uh, so this is the subject, like you would in uh, email, for example, have a subject. And we see that here's the uh, news group that's been assigned to it. Uh, this one is uh, baseball. Within our Allegrograph um, web view, we can drill into all the statements uh, through a Sparkle query, uh, and we see the uh, results here. So here's all the different triples related to this um, uh, data set. This data set is conformant to an OWL ontology. Um, so there's really one class that we've defined in our OWL ontology, uh, and this has a handful of properties. It has a body property, a category property, a newsgroup property, a subject property. So the body, subject, and newsgroup are what we just saw in Allegograph. Has category is a property where we're going to train our uh, system uh, to create that property. Uh, based upon our input data, which is the body, newsgroup, and subjects. Uh, so we're going to train our model based to then predict the category property. And then we're also going to use our inferencing rules to provide new uh, category properties, uh, new instances of that property uh, based upon our rules. So now I'm going to hop over to our command line interface. So first we have on the left an interface for our uh, Spark job server, uh, which is currently running. And then on the right here, I have a, um, a command line interface that's running on my local Macintosh. And this is where we're going to run our scripts. Uh, so the script is going to submit a job to the job server, which then submits it to our Spark, Spark cluster. Um, and the Spark cluster accesses uh, Allegograph as needed uh, to run Sparkle queries to get data. 
as mentioned, I have a, a context open. This is context one. Uh, so this is a persistent job that's running uh, where we can send new tasks to it on an ongoing basis. Uh, so all of the tasks in these scripts are going to run in the same context, uh, which is a great way to have a new job start uh, without the overhead of starting a brand new process uh, across the cluster. So first I'm going to run our training script and I'll talk you through it as it runs. So I start my training scripts. This runs a Sparkle query, uh, which you can see uh, here. This gets the uh, documents that we're going to be using within our, uh, within our uh, training process here. So first we get our list of documents. Then we're going to do a Sparkle query to get uh, all of the features uh, for, for, the, uh, for the training that we're doing. And you can see this is what's running right now. Uh, this is a task that's running within our cluster to do a Spark query to get the features such as the body, the subject, uh, and the news group for each of those documents and putting that into an RDD. And this will be our training set uh, for the Naive Bayes uh, classification algorithm. So currently that's being written out, uh, that data is being written out into an RDD, uh, which will be used in the next step, uh, which will be to actually build the model. And you can see here we've got some log information going on with our job server. Uh, we can see that uh, the Sparkle query, uh, the, the server URL of a Lego graph that it's using, uh, the uh, uh, repository that it's using within a Lego graph, uh, and the uh, RDD uh, that's being used, which is called training features. And while we're waiting for this to get to the next step, oh, oh there it goes, actually. Uh, so we're running our um, uh, training to build the model at this point. Uh, so we're building our model, and the model came up with an accuracy of 0.83 uh, out of our uh, test, or our training document set, which is uh, 7,500 out of the, um, the total of 20,000. Um, and that concludes our training set of processes. Now I'm going to run our uh, classification processes. And this is going to take all of the uh, documents, run it through the model that we just built, that produces our has category properties, and then that gets written back into a Lego graph. So first off, uh, we have a Sparkle query, which goes and gets the uh, data to use, uh, the, the, the documents to use. Uh, and then the next set of uh, Sparkle queries go and get the individual features for each of those documents, uh, such as the, the body, uh, subject, and, um, um, body and subject of those documents. And then that gets sent to our model uh, to produce the uh, has category uh, properties. So first off, we need to get all those features, write that out into an RDD, um, and then the next step, we'll iterate over that RDD uh, in parallel across our cluster uh, to then do the classification. And as it's running, all of the code related to this uh, is available on GitHub, and a AMI uh, will be available so that on EC2, you could start up the AMI and then run these uh, in, uh, on, on a server um, uh, in a pre-configured uh, form. So now we have all of our uh, feature data within an RDD. We're running that through the uh, classification process, which happened fairly quickly. Uh, then we ran our inference rules, um, which also happened fairly quickly. 
Um, and now we're uh, taking those uh, rules and we're writing that back into a legograph. So this is writing, uh, doing inserts uh, to a legograph for all the triples that we just produced. Uh, all the different has category uh, properties and so forth are now being written back into uh, a legograph. And once this completes, I'll hop back into the Allegograph web view, uh, and you'll see the new properties uh, are present. Of course, we're just using a single server uh, in this environment, but of course, all of this would happen a lot uh, more quickly uh, when, if we're running multiple servers as all of these processes run in parallel. Great, so that job completed. Uh, it's written all the uh, has category properties back into Allegograph. Um, so now if I switch back over into Allegograph um, and go, go back to the overview, we can see that in this repository now I have 96,000 uh, statements, uh, whereas I had um, around 75,000 previously. Uh, and if, if I reload this document here, now I see that it has the has category property, uh, which is baseball, uh, and it has the has category property for sports. This is the one that actually came out of the inferencing rules. So it, it uh, based upon uh, its input, it predicted the baseball category. Uh, then it used the inferencing rules, which uh, provided the uh, topic sports uh, property. Um, and all of the uh, documents were categorized this way. Uh, with, uh, as, the, um, as I mentioned, after I trained the model, uh, approximately 86% uh, um, accuracy uh, based upon our uh, inputs. So that steps us through uh, the various scripts to do a training task uh, as well as a classification task. Um, as I mentioned, all of the related code is available on GitHub. And an, AB, an a, uh, AMI will be available shortly to run this on a single cluster within the um, Amazon environment. Uh, thanks for uh, uh, participating in our, in our demo here today. And uh, I hope you enjoy working with Allegograph and Spark and uh, our machine learning integration code. Thank you.